Ahoy! New World Update 1.83 is coming out today. It comes with quite a few interesting changes along with the more major piece of the puzzle that is the Crassus event. This is all just small stuff compared to what we'll likely see soon on the PTR. Once that goes up, if their plan goes as announced, then I think we should be seeing that this week, later this week on the PTR, because then it would be the last week of February where they can release that on a normal schedule at least. We'll have to see if that turns out to be the case, but either way, let's look at the update itself and see what we have here. First, we have the Legacy of Crassus event. Obviously, this is what's going to happen from February 21st to March 7, where you can hunt down these two guys across Eternum. It's a world event once again, and you can get particular specific loot from them. And it is worth repeating them on a daily basis based on how they are distributing the wards. I've already talked about the event itself, so we don't need to go into much detail here, but that's one part of the patch. A general fix that we're getting is that harvestable resources were non-interactable in certain situations. And expeditions had an issue where they had the same elemental mutation more often than intended, or rather, they always had the same one. They're fixing that now, even though they are almost uh, introducing the next expedition. I'm glad they're doing it. I wish it would have happened like two months earlier, so would have actually had a bit more of a, well, interesting and frequently changing cycle. There's a quest fix for the quest Dishonorable Daughter. And there's some AI fixes as well, Dried Soldiers not attacking properly, and the Bobblehead Cats are gone, which honestly, it's kind of sad to see them go, they were really funny. Very interesting changes happening to Outpost Rush. Increase the amount of personal scoring gained from capturing and contesting points and using resources. Not necessarily the biggest fan of the PvE aspect here, resources I feel like, I, I, they can be useful, but I guess it makes more sense in the sense that people actually have an incentive to hand in resources now instead of just trying to farm the most mobs for score or something. But what I really like here is the aspect of capturing and contesting points, rewarding more score, because that should be the main objective of Outpost Rush anyways. So yeah, very glad to see that. It's been in demand, especially from tank players for a very long time or from heavy players. So we're going to see how many points they provide now. So how this is exactly in terms of point balance, but I hope it's going to be a decent chunk. I hope it's going to make it more worth it to actually capture and contest points. Question is what that means for holding points as well, if you're just standing there while it's not being contested, but we'll have to see. Also, there's a brief invulnerability window for players that spawn in their home fort to prevent spawn camping. For PvP arenas, there's a fix that allowed players to change equipment while in the spectator box. I didn't know they want that to not happen, but I guess that was never the plan. Basic and major fishing trophies were displaying the incorrect luck values, that should be correct now. And a bug was fixed that allowed players to join the faction that controlled the most territories. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind if people could switch into whatever faction they like at whatever point they want, because there are always going to be people that want to fight the dominant faction as well, and unless the server is really, really small and there's really just one competitive company, at which point it doesn't really matter anymore, uh, then I think it should just be possible for you to switch to whichever team you want to be with, but they don't want that, so they're fixing that again. Unfortunate, but also not a big deal. Leaderboards get some fixes to the sorting when filtering for fans or company, but more importantly, fixed an issue that prevented some players from receiving rewards. Affected players will receive the rewards in a future update. This was true for at least a handful of players, so this is something that definitely needed to be fixed. For Brimstone Sands, fixed an issue that caused Brimstone Sands outpost storage to incorrectly default to the Brimstone Sands settlement storage. Fixed an icon error with a Baal hoop ring and fixed an issue where the storage UI would not show up when interacting with a storage shed, which is when it took forever to load. There are also some quality of life improvements to locked items. They can no longer be dropped. And when you use the transfer all button, then the locked items will now stay in your inventory. This should be very, very nice for expedition runs, especially if you want to sort out your gear afterwards, because sometimes it just gets a little weird and mixes between your existing gear. So if you have an empty storage that doesn't have any weapons or armor in it, you can just keep all your gear that you're actually using for the run locked and then just do transfer all into that empty storage and then sort it out there and it should be a lot easier. So that's actually a pretty great quality of life improvement. But those are all the changes, but later on today we'll actually have a look at the event itself and the rewards. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when that comes out. Thanks for watching and thanks to my patrons for supporting this video. Yuxloth, out.